All right, we're covering a video Alex did over four years ago. Man, I can't believe it's been that long. Back when his hair was a different color and he literally said at the end of the day to the point where people were putting timestamps, counters, and taking shots every single time that he said it. If you remember those days, comment down below because you're an OG, all right, son? So we're doing four more styles of car builds because there's a ton out there. So let's cover a few different ones. Also, no matter what type of build you're doing, make sure you check out Fitment Industries for all your wheels, tires, and suspension. That's the plug, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about one I think we can all relate to because, well, we've all been there or we're currently there. Budget builds. Now, there is multiple ways to go about this one. You can be real smart about it and realize there's some places you can save a little bit of money by not going with name brands with some of the like cosmetic mods or maybe you're getting an intake that's more affordable rather than the all carbon fiber one even though that's super sick. It's also super expensive. And then there's the, I went through the aisle at AutoZone and did my entire build in one hour in the parking lot. Listen, I get it, well, sort of. Cars are expensive as and so are parts. Why'd we get into such expensive hobbies? I don't know, because you can't take the money with you when you're dead. Budget builds are a lot of times people that are working on their first car, or maybe they're still in college and you're eating ramen six out of the seven days of the week. You'll see these cars on replica wheels or even sometimes rep wheels that are second hand on their fourth powder coating having some curb marks and the structural integrity of the wheel is about the same as the structural integrity of my sphincter after Taco Bell. But like Taco Bell, it was cheap and it's gonna leave you satisfied for 30 minutes. I'm gonna say these types of builds are more of a phase and you will eventually grow out of it. Realizing that cheaping out on everything literally causes more headaches in the long run than it does in making you happy with the instant gratification of modding your car, let's sum this one up. Stick on accessories, use beat up parts off Facebook Marketplace, and you keep pushing off your maintenance just one more week. Next. Now let's go a completely different side of the scene, track cars. You know, there's a saying that says all track cars can be show cars, but not all show cars can be track cars. I think that holds true for the most part. These are the types of builds that every inch matters because it does when you're competing and going for tenths to hundredths of a second for time these types of builds are constantly progressing and seeing where you can save some weight or pull just a little more power while staying in your class the good news is generally these are pretty damn good looking and since you're putting quality parts on it because you need every ounce of performance you can get turns out decent the bad news is there's probably a solid chance you ate some cones slid off the track or even bumped the wall ask sam i watched them do it you'll see expensive setups from rays advan and other wheels growing in popularity like titan 7 and anovia wheels wheels that are focused on being lightweight but strong enough to take the abuse they're about to get Chance are you won't see expensive air ride setups, but in turn, you'll see coilover setups that rival the price of air ride. From Fortunato to BC Racing, Moton, Olins, the list goes on. There's a bunch of high-end coilovers out there. Tires, when you're a track build person, tires are actually cool and you spend more time picking those out than you do your wheels. The people that do these types of builds most likely will judge you and tell you how the carbon fiber hood you bought actually weighs more than your OEM hood. I did that with my Evo 10, stop making fun of me. But to sum this one up, nitpicky, expensive, and judgmental. Don't get mad, it's just a generalization, all right? flip-flopping here like the scene in the office where Michael's like, snip, snap, snip, snap. 
I wish they were still doing The Office. I miss that show. Anyway, static builds. Now, what does static mean? Literally, what they're referring to is suspension that doesn't change height. Opposite of air suspension, but what a static car has turned into for slaying in the car community nowadays is basically a car that's dumped on its nuts as close to the pavement as possible, and it's throwing sparks like those Razor Spark scooters. I never had one, but I remember my mind being blown as I watched a commercial of these packs you'd load onto your scooter so you could throw sparks everywhere while you and your three buddies with bruises on your shins tear up your local road. What a great idea for seven-year-olds. Anyway, if you're doing a static build, the name of the game is low and doing it by any means necessary. It means maxing out your coils and then going a step further and removing your locking collars so you can drop your car just another quarter inch. Your tires are stretched and are hanging onto the bead like me trying to fit in my pants from high school in the front button ready to bust out at a crazy velocity. You'll have camber, that way you can tuck your tire into the fender well while puckering driving down the road praying that your spring rate that's stiffer than a brick is enough to stop the rim of your wheel from frying up morning breakfast and making bacon on your quarter panel. Truly, I think these cars get a lot of hate in the community, but the people that are in it respect the sh out of it because it, it, it's not easy at all. There's a ton of trial and error and to successfully drive your car down the road less than an inch off the ground and not destroy it is a big accomplishment. Cars look good low, and this is going to the extreme with it. I've seen things like Jasper relocating his fuel cell to the trunk so it's not hanging in a scrape away from the ground. I've watched Matt Wirtz with his STI literally spend years perfecting his fitment and tubbing out his front fenders to the point where I'm convinced he's actually a wizard because I just don't understand how the car being that low can even turn or do anything. And that dude puts miles on his car. When it's up and running, I've literally seen him drive across states for shows. Keywords there were up and running, Subaru problems. Just kidding, he's doing an overhaul. Anyways, static people seem to hate the idea of air ride and bringing it up will cause rage, hateful comments, and gluteus maximus soreness which is just a fancy way of saying butt hurt. There's a lot of pride that goes into static builds and it does get down to the millimeter. Properly done static setups you'll see with three piece wheels from like Work and SSR and Rotiform and those big name brands. Uh, there's a million more out there, but that's just naming a few. You'll see BC Extreme Low Coilovers or basically any brand that offers custom spring rates and coils that are specifically meant to be low so the strut doesn't go through the bottom and start tearing into your CV boot and then you have CV grease, every, you don't want it. Anyways, tires, this one's kind of funny. You'll generally see these on more affordable tires because when you're stretching the out of your tires and have the contact patch smaller than my R34 GTR collection, I have one die cast one that says on my desk, so it's, it's pretty small. You don't need really expensive tires. A really popular one was Nitto Neogen since they're affordable, stretched really well, and had thicker inner sidewalls which helped with camber wear. We're starting to see the Neogen die off due to global inventory issues, so the Vercelli Strata has kind of taken the place of that tire. But to sum up static builds, no sparks, no bueno. Good fitment, otherwise you'll make breakfast on your fenders. And if you have air ride, you're dead to me. That's basically how they roll. Finally, one that I think is funny and maybe the only one I don't fully understand is the brand loyal build. The person that has had a Ford since they were 15 and a half and their dad did and so did their granddad and so did his granddad and his granddad was Henry Ford himself. This can be any brand though. People get 100% fixated on it for some reason, can only own cars from this brand because they believe they're the best. Like the Porsche guy that yells at me because I said Porsche and not Porsche. While he's wearing a porch hat and socks and wakes up to his porch shaped alarm clock, there's nothing wrong with loving a brand and standing behind it, but what baffles me is not wanting to explore and experience stuff from other people and other brands. But this person will 100% die on that hill defending their brand and any rival brand is literally trash and will make this person sick to their stomach. These come with the signs you can buy at the gag store that are like Chevy parking only and you hang it up in your garage. It's like brand loyal dad jokes or something. Wheels, tires, and suspension on these builds? Well, kinda unlikely since they worship the ground these cars were built on. It's hard to get away from the OEM goodness that come on these vehicles. Majority of times, it's just subtle changes to try and maintain everything that is good and holy about their car. And to sum up number four, we have loyalty, 
bad dad jokes and the sticker of the kid pissing on the brand rival. They, they still make those. But which type of build do you fall under? Or do you fall under a different one? Comment below, I'm gonna read through them all, try me. And if you want to see what I do outside of work or what type of build I got going on, make sure to follow me on my socials. We have itscoded.fi on TikTok and Instagram. And again, if you're working on your build, we have all the wheels, tires, and suspension you could ever dream of at fitmentindustries.com. I forgot to say at the end of the day 50 times. Alex is going to be pissed.